You can also use the single phase voltage source as a single phase power generator. Then you can go here, you push the tick box generator, and what you see now is that you have to enter the maximum power. In this case, I choose 100 megawatt, and then automatically it calculates an inertia. Uh, the inertia is normally shown here. You can change it, of course. And then let's run it now to see what happens. The first thing you see is that you can uh, you get a frequency meter here. And if we let it run, we can also see now how the frequency changes depending on the amount of power you supply. So here you control the power and here you control the voltage. Now you see that I do not consume enough power, so the frequency goes up. So I have to reduce the resistance to increase the power consumed by the resistor and then you see how the frequency goes down. <clears throat> if the frequency goes below 50 Hz, I may have to adapt it again. So I control the power output and then the frequency will go up again. So this is a simple generator and you can observe how the equilibrium between power generated and power consumed at the load is uh, kept in a balance. Controlling the balance between power generated and uh, power at the load can be quite uh, difficult, especially if you have more than only one source. And therefore, in a generator room, you have a droop, and the droop is controlling uh, the frequency by controlling the power. So this is uh, the droop checkbox, and as soon as you have the droop checkbox ticked, it will be much, much easier to control the frequency the power output will be controlled accordingly. So you can see even if I push my power output, the real power delivered from the source to the load is limited by the frequency control. And this is exactly what also happens in a real power generation station. So the drop helps to keep the balance between generation and load. And by the way, uh, the power output slider here adapts the torque applied to the generator. So it's kind of a torque regulator. You can also use the generator as a storage unit. In order to get the storage ready, I just push the tick box for storage. Of course, the tick box for generator must be, must be on as well. And then I put some megawatt hours, which I want to store. So the storage capacity is in this case, let's say 0.3 megawatt hour. And let's run it now and let's see what happens. So now I use the storage. You can see how this red bar is decreasing over time. And if I want to fill the storage, I need to use the source as a motor. Now you can see how energy is pumped from this source here into the generator, into the, the storage. You see now how the storage capacity is filled and once the storage capacity is fully uh, filled there is nothing to store anymore. You can also use the voltage source as a renewable power generator like for example a wind generator. To do so again you double click on the source and uh, you tick the renewable checkbox and then here you have to enter a value in seconds uh, every, for example, in this case, second, second, every two seconds, the torque of the renewable power generator is randomly changed. And this will be the effect. Let's run it. You can see now how the level of the torque is changing randomly every second, second. And you see how this affects the phase angle between the grid and the power generator. Test all the source features yourself. Go to www.ecsp.ch.